well, here we go, another week of it. More questions, more stories, more chit chat. I love it. This is why I love the Moor Army podcast. again to another episode of the Moor Army Podcast. Welcome to this Tuesday's edition of the program. Hope you're all keeping well out there. What a weekend it has been. We've had loads of sunshine. We've had loads of cool drinks. We've had people enjoying the, the weekend's weather by having barbecues and, you know, water parties, hot tub parties, you name it. People have been having it all across the UK. And a lot of you have been in touch with me over the last lot of days. Let me know what you've been up to. I've had a great weekend since the last time I saw you. Um, I have had a, a busy weekend, but also a very good weekend. But anyway, yes, guys, welcome back to the, the podcast for another episode. Hope you've all had a great weekend since the last time I spoke to you is last Thursday. If you haven't checked out the last episodes from last Thursday and last Tuesday, They are available to stream or download on the available platforms here for the podcast, which is Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and also Tune In Radio. Anyway, yes, good morning. I'm sat here this morning looking out the window. Now, it's not as sunny this morning as what it normally is, but apparently the sun's to come out later on today. But what weather we've had over the last few days has been absolutely incredible, well into the 20s, every single day. And I've been enjoying the weather, should we say, over the last few days as well. And a lot, I know a lot of you out there have as well, because a lot of you have been in touch with me. So, and I appreciate that. But before we go any further into the program today, and let you know what I've been up to, because I've had a really good weekend. And i got some interesting things to talk about on the podcast today. Um, if you are new to the Murami podcast, or if you are a regular listener, you know how to get in touch with the program. Um, but if, you, if you're new to the podcast, that's how you can get in touch with us here on the show. So if you have any questions at all, anything you'd like to hear me talk about, any subjects you want to hear me talk about and more, this is how you can get in touch with me here on the Moor Army Podcast. First of all, the email, which is moorarmypodcast at yahoo.com. Also, you can contact me on the old social media, which is Facebook, which is the Moor Army YouTube channel Facebook page. Please drop a like on that page. I would appreciate it. More followers than likes, so I do appreciate it. Also, Instagram, uh, which is official Matthew Moor on Instagram. And also, to get all your merchandise, Check out all the vlogs throughout the years. Busy with the Moor Army Hub, uh, which is moorarmy.co.uk. But anyway, yes, guys, wow, what weather we've been having here. Not just here in Northern Ireland, but obviously across the whole of the UK over the last couple of days. It's been it's been incredible. I mean, I haven't seen weather, I guess, since I don't know how long now. But again, like everybody does here in Northern Ireland, especially in the UK, wants to see the nice sunshine. Everybody tries to take advantage of it as much as possible. Whether it be get your gardens all caught up with or do a bit of sunbathing, head to the beach, barbecues, drinks I'd say with your friends, garden parties, whatever it is you're up to. It always seems to happen every time. The sunshine seems to pop out, which has been popping out quite a lot over the last week or so. But I've had a really good weekend, guys. I had a, a fantastic weekend. I was out there last Friday evening. I was actually out for dinner with a friend, um, which was really, really good. I had a fantastic evening on Friday night. I ended up going to uh, for a walk along uh, Crawford's Burn Beach here in Northern Ireland, which was just an incredible view. I got some really fantastic pictures of the sunset. Um, I actually ran into a long-term fan of the channel as well. Young lad I've known for the last couple of years. I ran into him and his girlfriend. I was talking to him. I was had a good catch-up with him. Um around a couple of other people as well who recognised me just to say hello and whatnot. Had a great walk along the beach, took a full advantage of the sunshine. Here's the thing though, a lot of people always say about that them beaches here, in, especially in North Down, people sort of like are, are scared to go to the beaches because of the, the crowds of teenagers and whatever else. Now don't get me wrong, whenever I went down to the beach on Friday night for a walk, there was quite a few teenagers knocking about, more older ones than younger ones. 
But I did see a lot of adults there as well taking advantage of the weather with their children. Um, I was walking along the beach and I seen people like having wee fire pits and barbecues and just sitting there. I'm seeing people sitting singing songs with guitars and you know it was a great atmosphere. There was no trouble. There was people. Obviously, there was a lot of teenagers I saw knocking about as well. But there was police on hand to move them on. But was, there was never any hassle. Um, but for what I saw, I mean, it was just an incredible view. The, the sun was shining. It was evening time. The sun was starting to come down. It was just an amazing evening just to have a nice walk along the beach and you know switch off from the world. I, I was in a place there in in Crawfordsburn called the Crawfordsburn Inn, which is a, a pretty famous hotel stroke restaurant whatever you want to call it resort here in, in, in north down county down northern ireland whatever um it's had its first year of celebrities even there i mean a couple of years back there i, I ran into frank lampard there football player manager now as well um was there a long time ago actually ran to him about five six years ago in there one time because he's obviously married to a girl here from northern ireland but he was obviously home she was home visiting people whatever else so but yeah had a great meal i went down for a lovely walk along the beach so i had a really good night uh, on Friday night, and it was a really, really great experience. Saturday, on the hand, I ended up actually putting the vlog up today about it. Um, I was actually at football training on Saturday. You're probably thinking to yourself, Matthew, the fucking football season's finished. Why are we at football on Saturday? Um, I was just up at the ground, meeting with the manager and stuff to organise the, the list of pre-season fixtures to get them put out and stuff like that. Because here's the thing, guys, when you work in media and football, your season never really ends. So I was up there on Saturday morning. The fucking heat was incredible about that ground on Saturday morning. Some of the players were there, not them all, of course, because obviously a lot of them are still on their their break, holiday break, whatever else. Um, just a few coming back, obviously, to work on their fitness and stuff. Some of them have just recently come back from injuries, trying to top up the, the, the their fitness and stuff they got there because pre-season for us starts on the 21st of June, which is just, I can't believe it's pre-season already, but then the weeks are flying by that fucking quick. You just don't see them going by. But I was up there for an hour or two on Saturday morning. It was great seeing a few of the boys. Um, the under 21s manager was there too as well. I got Mark, got to speak to him for a little bit. Obviously after his uh, massive achievement this past week where the under 21s became league champions of of, of the uh, of the division, which was great. Um, then I left from there and I was back out again. I ended up going to a place called Castle Ward. Uh, which was just an amazing day. Wow. Lovely walks. Uh, over by Strangford Lock here in Northern Ireland. It was incredible. The views was amazing. Um, I think I posted the video actually of um, the lock on my Instagram. I'll just double check here when I'm talking to you. I think I made it did, but if I didn't do it, I'll actually post it today. What an incredible, incredible view it was. Um, I actually did, yeah, posted it on Saturday, guys. And I actually posted photographs from the Friday night's walk as well. Guys, go and check out some of the pictures I got from that sunset on Friday night. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, I posted, I just checked it there. I just posted it there. Um, it was down, it was just an incredible afternoon. So it was at Castle Ward. I sat at the side of the, uh, the lake. Plus, guys, now... <clears throat> A lot of people have asked me before if I ever watched Game of Thrones. I've never watched Game of Thrones. Now, I know people who've started it. A few friends of mine who were extras. I know a guy who's an actor who was in, I think he was in the first two episodes, I think. <clears throat> guy used to wrestle for me. He uh, was in, in a couple of episodes of, of Game of Thrones as well. Years ago, I was actually considering when I first was being casted about growing my hair and growing a beard just to be part of it. Um... I was going to be given an opportunity to maybe be an extra in the program, but I didn't, I didn't do it. Game of Thrones wasn't really my cup of tea back in the day. Um, but I've always wanted to stay to myself, always wanted to do it, just even try and watch it and see what it's like. Because I have a lot of my, my viewers and my, my listeners always ask me all the time, you know, do you ever watch Game of Thrones? And, you know, the semi all these memes about Game of Thrones. And I, I've never watched it. But in saying that there, Castle Ward has a, 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 has a place there where... A lot of Game of Thrones was filmed in. Not a lot, but I mean, some of the scenes were filmed in Game of Thrones. And it was this area, or, or area, whatever you want to call it, um, that I went into. And th there was like a wee mini castle, and there was like a wee courtyard area, and things like that. Were, and you actually seen the sign outside where it said Game of Thrones was filmed here. And I went in and checked it out and looked around. It was incredible. Unbelievable the things that I found. So, again, I'm a history buff. I love finding all different things like that. I love going to museums, not just to be an old bore or whatever. I just love 
learning new things and, and and hearing stories from the past and whatever else. Even when I went to school, I used to love when people were were bored about like World War One, World War Two, and all that stuff. No, I was intrigued in it because I wanted to hear the stories and. You know, I've always been interested in hearing different things and learning new things and trying new things. I've said this multiple times in this podcast and also multiple times on my YouTube channel. You know, I love trying new things and doing new things and listening to people's stories and whatever else. So, But I was there the other day and I was looking around that, that thing in Castle Ward and I tell you what though, my eyes were opened. I spent, when I say that big castle, well, not big castle, but a wee castle thing they used as well in the show. And I was up inside that as well, looking inside it. And it was actually really, really good to be inside there and have a look around and read a few things about the place and whatever else. But, I mean, it was just an incredible experience on Saturday, guys. And I really enjoyed it. And then I'm going to come out of there. I went for a walk right along where they, um, there was a, is it a boat club or a yacht club down near that area anyway? I was walking right around there and I found an Norway castle, which we didn't go up into because it was getting later on in the day. It was, we were just tired. Our legs were sore. I was just exhausted and the heat was it was mad as well. It was just a oh, overall. It was just a great day, and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. There was a wee cafe in in, in uh, Castle Ward as well. It's through the National Trust. Uh, it's like a park thing we go into. Um, you know, you go in there, and there's like all these different things as well. And the grounds are incredible. It has this big, massive mansion house as well, which I'm going to go back to soon as well. I've, I actually said the other day when I was out, that I'm actually going to go back there and do a vlog, because there's some really cool stuff there I'd love to show you guys on the YouTube channel. For anybody who hasn't even been to Castle Ward, that was my first time ever being there, and I actually thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. But anyway, no, it was great, and it was a great experience, and I'll definitely be back there 100%, and the fact that it was a lovely day as well was made it even better. And there was a wee cafe I went in there too as well, and I had a drink and a sausage roll, it was great. Um, I wouldn't say the sausage rolls would be up to Lewis's standard, to be quite honest with you. There was a bit of a different type of sausage roll. I don't think Lewis would be too happy with that. Or I think he still would say Pound Bakery is probably the best sausage roll in the UK. <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was great. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it was a great two days. So it was. So, And then on Sunday, I just I didn't even do much on Sunday. Uh, what did I do on Sunday? I think I cut the grass, did it? I did. Done a bit of gardening on Sunday, got the gardens all brought up to scratch. Um, but I was just enjoying the lovely weather, guys, over the weekend. It was great, so it was for the first time in a long time to actually get and sit and enjoy the sunshine, which was great. So, But it was a great weekend. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it was overall a really good weekend. So, But yeah, guys, a lot of you have been contacting me about the sunshine, what you've been up to. You've been sending me photos of your your garden parties, hot, but some of you are away to the weekends away at the beach with your family and some of you are actually away on holiday. So yeah, I hope you are all having a great time, uh, whatever it is you're up to. And uh, most importantly, keep putting on that, fat, that sun cream because guys, it is hot out there. So what is now, for what I was checking the forecast there this morning with my morning coffee, I was seen here in Northern Ireland, apparently it's going to break. I think it's th- uh, Friday or Saturday, it's going to break. A bit of light drizzle, maybe. I'm looking at here this morning. It's a bit overcast this morning, a wee bit dull. But for what I'm checking here, by lunchtime today, the sun's going to be coming out and it's going to be well into the 20s again. So, I don't know. I mean, it's just, ugh, it's mad. Um, some people are not obviously not enjoying the sunshine, um, especially the likes of animals. Um, some people, I actually got a message the other day from a person, I can't remember what it actually fully entailed, but I do remember reading the email and it did say about you know, dogs and stuff like that there, feel sorry for dogs, especially in this heat and you know, other animals as well, which I, I totally agree with because, I mean, the, the heat for animals is just, oh, I mean, I done a vlog the other day where was mum and dad's out the other day where mum, uh, she and mum got a new haircut and her wee doggy, God love it, because it's black, it's co- the colour of the dog's black, it's just all oh, the heat just it draws to her and she's roasted, but mum's always on top of it by giving her plenty of fluids and keeping her in the shade and You'll constantly check on her paws to make sure she's okay and whatever else because of the heat of the ground and stuff. But, yeah, she's doing good. But it, it's other people out there, I mean, especially leaving dogs in cars, especially at this uh, in this type of weather, which is just fucking insane. You know, it's just be careful, guys, with your, your animals out there um, because this weather can really affect them. So it can. But overall, a, a majority of people I know out there are enjoying the weather and, you know, I'm enjoying the weather too as well. Um, my kids are, are loving it too as well. I mean, Lewis has got himself a bit of a tan. He was out there yesterday playing football with his friends at a local football pitch and he came in there last night at about, 
half seven last night, eight o'clock, and you could see the colour of Lewis, the tan he's picking up. This this uh, he's been out playing football two or three times there over the weekend, and the tan that he's picked up, <laughs> he's fucking nuts. But then Lewis is always tanned really easy. He's like me; he tans really, really easily. Unlike Brooks, he burns and then tans eventually. Um, I mean, for years and years, you go back and watch some of the old vlogs whenever we're in holidays and stuff like that, where it's been really, really warm. Lewis always comes home like he's been in Spain for like three months. <laughs> he's just he's like me, and the color of his hair as well makes it stand out even more. But uh, yes, guys, I hope you've all been enjoying the sunshine. Most importantly, be safe out there, especially with sun cream and whatnot, because. Again, it's been a it's been a, a very warm few days here in the UK and people are taking full advantage of it and it is to continue well in the next week apparently too as well. So I hope you are all enjoying it. Now what have I got for you on the podcast today? Well, more development on the Phillips Schofield situation. Um Miss Holly has now appeared on this morning yesterday with a statement. Mr Prince Harry or you even just call him Prince anywhere, just call him Harry. Harry's in court today this morning actually in relation to this whole phone hacking scandal um you know i want to talk about as well today guys um about youth violence and the reason why i want to talk about that as well is because i saw a recent video pop up on social media from i think it was either yesterday or the day before in relation to young ones and these gangs of little young ones running around nowadays thinking they're billy big balls i've talked about this before in the podcast but Recent actions, I have saw a video from a train station here in Northern Ireland where an innocent man was attacked by multiple young ones um, because he was trying to, uh, for what I was reading in the story, and don't quote me on this, um, he was trying to protect uh, people away from uh, young ones basically playing up on a train, acting, acting the fucking dickhead, and this guy ended up getting an absolute kicking on the platform, which I saw the video too, which is absolutely fucking disgusting. How anybody can even stand there and film that without even trying to help that man is beyond me. I want to talk about that. Um, finally, people are starting to stand up to these just oil protesters. I see more videos emerge over the weekend there. These fucking Looney Tunes are finally being kicked off the road. But it always seems to be the police are sticking up for these numpties and instead of moving them off the road, which is great to see people finally starting to stand up to these balloon heads as well which is great to see um you know a lot of you have been contacting me there last week i, I talked about mortgages and rent payments and stuff like that there by people's homes and stuff it says here and i the homeowners could possibly face more charges it's i've got a, a few other things i want to talk about today as well guys i'm just trying to read through my notes here because i made a few notes this morning uh before i headed into uh recording the podcast today um oh yes there was an apple uh, conference yesterday about the new iPhones or not iPhones, sorry, iPads, computers and whatnot. Um, because the new Apple iPhones due out, I think it's September for any Apple users out there. I want to talk about that because I'm an Apple user. We'll talk about mobile phones as well and more on the podcast here today as well. So let's get into some of the subject, guys. The first thing I want to talk about is this incident that I saw. Um, on, on I don't know where it was Instagram or Facebook or whatever the fuck I saw it on. These young ones nowadays seem to be going around at the minute, and not, I'm not saying all young ones, I'm not saying that at all, there's a lot of young ones that are, who are very, very respectful, and I appreciate that, you know what I mean, um, but there's a lot of young ones nowadays that are getting away with fucking murder, and as a parent, it would piss me off if my kids were doing things like this, I saw a video emerge, I, I, don't get me wrong, I think it was Ballon Money train station here in Northern Ireland, I've seen a lot of videos like this popping up recently where young ones are attacking innocent people, now, don't get me wrong, I don't know the full ins and outs of this story, so please don't quote me on this. Anybody there who's listening to this and thinking, oh, Matthew, you're full of shit and whatever else, and how dare you say this and that, I'm just giving my view on this. I saw a video emerge on uh, social media, I think it was yesterday, of a, a man being basically kicked by multiple youths. I would say no older than maybe the age gap of 16 to maybe 19 or maybe 19, 20 at the oldest. Maybe not even that old. Um, for what I was reading online, apparently this gentleman was trying to assist people to keep them away from a, a crowd of youths. Apparently we're playing up on the train, whatever. I don't know what the whole ins and outs of it, and I could be wrong. Don't quote me on this. But this man ended up being jumped by multiple young ones and literally had the shit kicked out of him on the middle of a platform. Um, which was fucking disgusting to watch. Here's the thing I want to talk about today, guys. These young ones nowadays have... Not them all. I'm not saying all young ones. I'm saying there's a, there's a minority of them out there 
who are going around this world right now thinking they can do whatever the fuck they want and think they can get away with whatever they want with no repercussions, no boundaries, no respect, no fuck all. They just go around. Now, don't get me wrong, every generation always has some, but I've found lately, and even the fact that someone's even stand filming it why they're fucking doing it, which makes me even sicker as a parent. Like, if I thought for a split second that my son and daughter was doing things like that, Jesus Christ, man, I would come down on top of them like a ton of bricks. If my if I thought my Lewis, who's age 14, 15 nearly, next year, going out doing things like that, I'd whip that, I'd whip his ass, and he wouldn't be at that door till he was at least 18. He wouldn't have a mobile phone, he wouldn't have a computer, he wouldn't have a friend. He would be grounded, beyond grounded. Like, to do things like that's just fucking disgusting. You know what I mean? I've seen a lot of these videos pop up online recently about young ones just thinking they can go around doing whatever they want and picking on innocent people and hitting random people. and They're doing it in gangs as well, which is just fucking disgusting. I saw this video. Now, as I said, I don't know the whole ins and outs of this, but I saw this story online and I, I saw the video and I was just absolutely disgusted. I was actually disgusted with it. And I was thinking, and in the comments that I was reading on social media, like, you know, these little bastards need to be taught a lesson. You know, PA, the, the police service in Northern Ireland and the public prosecution service should fucking nail these be bastards to the wall. And I agree, they should do. But here's the thing. You drive past local courts or walk past courthouses nowadays and they're all standing outside, not a cur in the world, knowing the fact that they're going to win there and get a smack in the fucking wrist. Where is the justice in this country now? I mean, see, in my day, now here, here comes old man Daddy Matthew mode here, like, in my day, if I'd have done anything up with friends, first of all, my dad would have kicked the shit out of me, first of all, I'd have been grounded for a long time. Then, when the police officers arrived and seen, they probably would have kicked your ass as well. Then I would have been taken to court and fucking hammered and probably put in jail, or if I was younger, a youth justice detention centre or whatever. This thing nowadays, these guys going around, ruining things for everybody, ruining days, deliberately causing fights and arguments. And as I said to you before, not all young ones are like this. Not them all. Now, there is ones obviously go out and do their own thing and have a wee all, all drink underage and all, you know what I mean? And, 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 and all teenagers do it and all. But at the end of the day, there's, there's a small minority of them going out there who are just being wee assholes who need to be fucking put in their place. And after watching that video, now I, I don't know the full story, as I said. For all I know, that man could have antagonized that. He could have brought it on himself. I don't know. But for what I saw and for what I've read so far, and I don't get me wrong, I'll read more into it and I find that it was actually, say, for example, the man's fault, then I would say, okay, I'll hold my hands up and say I was wrong. But for what I see, not, I've seen too many of these videos popping up lately uh, online and people start fucking filming it instead of helping the man. You know what I mean? I saw videos last week in England where ones were coming in from different countries and were picking on innocent people from like British people from the UK and kicking the shit out of them while it was being filmed. You know what I mean? Are people being randomly jumped by you because of certain, like, what they were, whatever. Don't get me wrong. I was a, a bullied and picked on and hitting all my days not there. But Jesus Christ, nowadays they're doing it in groups of seven, eight, nine, ten people at a time. Lately I've seen a lot of these things coming up and this needs to stop. This is where the law now needs to see things like this and say, right, enough's enough. These wee fuckers need to be stopped because it's getting ridiculous now. It's actually taken the piss now that innocent people are being hit and attacked for say this for for say for example trying to resolve a situation by trying to talk to someone or whatever you know give you a scenario over his young one say messing around on a train or a bus and someone comes up and goes lads do us a favor you know you're disturbing the peace here is he calm it down a bit and then these lads see that as a trigger. They jump up and go, ah, fucking man, they go mad, and then the whole big thing kicks off, and really, there's ways of dealing with things like that. You can talk about it and calm the situation down, whatever. But a lot of young ones nowadays are going around, and for, after seeing that video, it just made me fucking, dis I was just sick to my stomach watching it. Apparently, the man has a broken nose. He's he's got injury, head injury. He has cuts and bruises everywhere, and a majority of comments that I've read on these on this video on I can't even remember what platform it was I saw it on are saying that these wee fuckers should be brought to justice and they should be prosecuted there's cameras all over that whole platform people uh, camera people from the actual you know who filmed this thing whatever um you can see their faces in it too as well you know the police should be arresting these people taking them to court prosecuting them and if they're underage minors 
even prosecute the fucking parents. I would teach them a lesson. But again, it all comes from the home. Again, you know, it always starts from home life. I always say this. It's the way you bring your kids up. It's who you let them associate with. It's how you teach them right from wrong. I think I've talked about this before. I'm trying to remember I have talked about this before. Where if you teach your kids right morals and respect from day one. Like for example, as soon as they're born. Like routines and please and thank yous. And you know, just just general be a, a normal nice human being. Then they will know that and grow up. And if they start getting mixed in with the wrong crowd. Eliminate that problem by bringing them away from that. And saying to them, look listen. No, I'm not controlling you and telling you what to do. But when they obviously get to a certain age, like late teens, like say for example, Brooks age, 16, 17, I'd be saying, look, listen, I'm trying to give you a bit of advice here. You need to step away from that because of situations you may get yourself involved in, which will obviously affect you. But again, there's a lot of people out there who don't do that. And again, it's it, it, it's like a whole, as I always have a saying, this probably sounds fucking stupid, but I would say if two numpties get together and have a child, then that child grows up to be a fucking numpty, and then they go out and meet another numpty, and then they have numpties, and then they end up, it's a whole big evolution vicious circle thing. But again, it always starts from the home, how you bring your child up. But then again, you can, on the other side of the coin, you can give the child the best upbringing. But again, it's the world that we live in now, and the world's completely different now. And I look at things like that video, and I just, I just hang my head down and I go, fuck me, Jesus Christ, if I ever done something like that, my dad would have whooped my ass. Even in a grown man, if I was out with a couple of lads and we jumped on someone like that, my dad still would have come around and fucking beat my ass. My dad's 63, 64 year old. My dad would have come around and smacked me in the mouth and went, what the fuck are you playing at? Like, why'd you do that for? Are you stupid? Have a bit of respect. You know, it's just, oh, I, I just, I've seen that and it just, oh, as the saying goes, it makes my piss boil. So it did. So, I just, I, all I seem to be seeing recently is, you know, all these different things that are popping up. These young ones nowadays are like not them all. I'm saying that again, not them all. It's like them oil protesters, them young oil, oil protesters, them young ones in their early twenties who have never worked a day of their fucking life, you know, and they're overprivileged and they're getting everything handed to them and they're getting away with fucking murder and things like that. And I, it just makes my piss boy. It really does. Like when I was what. 17, 18, I was working like 50, 60, 70 hours a week in a job. You know, at 17, my daughter's age, I was working in a hotel kitchen, working 60, 70 hours a week, split shifts, weekends, everything I could to get to get money for the things that I wanted. At 18, I was working 50, 60 hours a week as well. I've always worked. And there's a lot of ones that are there who just leave school and think, ah, fuck it, I'll just live off the dole and sit my ass. Mummy and daddy will pay for everything. And I look at that and go, that's not mentality. I mean, my daughter. My daughter, Nye, has left, she left her current job she was working in. My daughter now works two jobs and also has done her A-levels. Like, seriously, two fucking jobs my daughter works and does her A-level studies at the minute and still goes to school. My son, who's been working as a photographer since he was ten, he's now fourteen. Now I'm not I'm not saying it there that again all young ones are like that. There's ones that are here working loads of hours. But again, there's ones out there who just don't want to work, don't want to do fuck all, just want to sit in their ass, like these fucking numpty oil protesters we're gonna talk about next. But again, when I watched that video the other day, it just made me sick and I was thinking, fuck me, seriously. Today's youth is just Crazy, crazy, and I hope and pray that first of all that man's okay, and second of all these young ones can learn from this and think, you know, I don't want to be that type of person. I want to grow up to be a normal, civilized person, and they can look back on their mistakes and think, oh shit, you know, I I, I made a big mistake here. I can't do that. Like for example, you know, I I talked about this young man I met before who used to shout abuse at me and be a complete we are sold to me and. Slobber and stuff. He's walked past my house and shouted abuse. Ah, Matthew Moore's a fucking dickhead and all YouTube wanker and all this here. And then when he turned to 18, he realised that he was being a numpty and he came up and he apologised to me. And see, to this day, every time I see that young man, he comes up and he shakes my hand and he's nice as pie. He's a good kid now. He's wised up. He's got himself a good girlfriend. He's working away and he's winding his neck in. You know what I mean? And we all make mistakes when we're young. Don't get me wrong. We all make mistakes. I've made mistakes when I'm young as well. But fuck me, I didn't go around jumping on train platforms, booting the head of an innocent man. But again, 
I, I'm only going for what I've read and saw so far. I, obviously, the police are going to get involved in this now. The public prosecution service are going to get involved in this. And these young ones are obviously going to be maybe arrested for this and charged with this, whatever else. So it's crazy, absolutely crazy. Moving on, as I said, about young ones, oil protesters. I, I briefly want to talk about this again. Um, I love all your comments about this. It's so fucking funny sending some of the stuff you wanted to do to them. Finally, it's all over the weekend. A lot more people are starting to stand up to these morons. They're dragging them off the roads. They're fucking ripping up their signs. But again, every time you try and stand up to them, the police are arresting you. And, you know, it should be the other way around. These people are being a fucking public nuisance. The police should be moving them off the road, whatever, but they're not. It's a load of shit. And I've heard that they're going to be getting more funding as well. And it's just absolutely crazy. But I'm good to see some more people taking the initiative. To basically try and get these stupid sons of bitches off the roads and everything else and trying to ruin, ruin events and whatever else. Get them off and get rid of them and get them moved on and tell them to get a fucking job and get themselves a life. Which is absolutely insane. Anyway, moving away from that. Um, I want to keep an eye on those stories by the way. The, 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 the story about the gentleman as well on the, the platform or whatever else. But again, I'm only going from what I've read so far guys. I may be wrong. Don't quote me on it. If I'm wrong, please let me know. Uh, you know, obviously I want to read more into it because at the end of the day I have my view like everybody else. Hence why I have this fucking podcast where I can say a, 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 an opinion on it. But anyway, moving on. Um, we've been talking with Philip Schofield for the last week or two about this whole bullshit that he's been doing. He's done interviews with BBC, The Sun, he's boohooing and crying. Everybody has their opinion on it all, whatever it is. But his partner in crime from this morning, Miss Holly, Holly Willoughby, has come out on TV yesterday morning which in my opinion the speech was obviously scripted and she had her view on what was going on a lot of you have been asking me since yesterday what's my view on it um I think it's been it's a scripted obviously speech no surprise um people ask me do you think she knew she knew he was gay but the thing with the young lad, do you think she maybe knew? I'm kind of on the fence in this one, to be honest with you guys. I'm more leaning towards maybe she did know, but she didn't want to get involved. I don't know. A lot of people, like I was watching uh, the news last night briefly before I went to bed, um, on multiple news channels, people were saying like, oh, no, some ones were saying like, oh, I think she does believe, we do believe her. No, but a lot of them were saying that they think that she was bullshitting. But again, this is Holly. Is, is Holly being like this to protect her career? I don't know. Philip Schofield seems to be done. You know, his agents even dropped him. All the things that he was doing for TV is all dropped him. He's not longer working for ITV. You know, he's no longer with this young lad anymore. Apparently this young lad's pulling pints in some pub in London. I don't know. My opinion of it all is, you know, the guy was married for years. He lied to his wife about being gay. He lied to his wife about an affair. Anybody who cheats on their partner is a fucking moron in my eyes. Me personally, guys, I'm a victim of being cheated on before. It's not a very nice thing to happen to you, especially when you're involved in a marriage. You know, it's fucking horrible. It's a it's a sinking feeling, you know, and it's one of those feelings where your world comes crumbling down, especially when you dedicate your whole life to that one person. And then for them to go and do that behind your back is absolutely fucking horrible. Um, you know, I've been cheated on a few times over the years by girlfriends, ex-wives, whatever else. So it's not a very nice thing to happen to you. And it's horrible. And it's not a very nice feeling. So I sympathize with his, his soon to be probably, well, obviously they're going to get divorced, his ex-wife. Um, his daughters, which he blabbered on about in this interview, but the fact that he mentioned in that interview, Caroline Flack, he says, oh, I understand how she feels and all that. How the fuck would you know? You know, he was boohooing and crying in that interview. And as I always say, guys, I can smell bullshit a mile away. And I don't believe him. And I'm sorry for people out there who do believe him. I don't believe him. I think he's bullshitting to try and save his career. Like most of these celebrities do nowadays. At the end of the day, fair, okay, fair dues. He held his hands up and he admitted that he was wrong. He had an affair with a young man. He, he obviously had lied to his wife. He had lied to his daughters. He had lied to the audience. You know, but then going watching Holly's speech yesterday, the way she came across, it's, it's sugarcoating bullshit, to be honest. You know what I mean? And again, it's just one of them situations where like, okay, he's gone now. You know, is he going to be able to save his career? 
I don't know. It'll probably go off the radar for a while. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and they said he'll probably pop up in some fucking gardening show or something on Channel 4 or something like that there over the next few years. All the millions that he has, he'll probably go away and do something or he'll end up working for some online TV channel or something like that. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's crazy. And again, I don't believe a word that he says. A lot of people have been saying this is one of the biggest cover-ups in, in recent times. You know, again, it's 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 going to be controversial no matter what. But again, my view of it is if you're married to someone and you're having an affair behind their back or you think you're, you're gay or whatever, you know... It's, it's, it's just fucking crazy. If you're cheating on your on your wife or your husband, which I think's wrong, you know, uh, just get out of the marriage and leave. Uh, uh, my view of it is, guys, if you're with someone, a partner or a husband or a wife or whatever, and you're not happy, just tell the person and leave. Don't. Or if you're not happy in a relationship, sit down and talk to your partner, try and work it out, speak about it. You know what? Just don't go out and fucking cheat on them. This is what I always say nowadays. Relationships nowadays are so, so hard to keep. Because there's too many temptations out there now to go and cheat or go and look somewhere else. You know, I mean, there's no, lo- there's hardly any loyalty in relationships anymore. Like when I walk down the street, and I've, I've said this to many of people before, if I see an elderly couple walking down the road and they're in their 80s or whatever, they've been married for like 60 years, I look at that and I'm actually jealous because I want that. When I'm in, if I ever get to that age, I want to be married 20, 30, 40 years. You know, I thought that was going to happen to me the day I got married, but unfortunately it didn't happen. You know what I mean? For circumstances beyond my control. But at the end of the day, you know, the, I think the old school romance now is now dead. Where people give up too easy in relationships. People change too quickly. You know, they, they give up far too easily. They don't want to fight for relationships anymore. They don't want to try and work things out anymore. They just want to get up and leave. Or, for example, they go online. They do online they online, online dating apps, whatever. They go on there and cheat on their wives and cheat on their husbands. They go with all these different nights out and cheating their partners. The way I look at it is, guys, if they want to do that there and they want to go and play the field, why get in the fucking relationship in the first place? You know, me, me personally, I'm old school. I prefer to be in a relationship. I prefer to be with one person. Not go out and, you know, sleep around and be a, a big whore and, and be around with everybody else. You know, it's just me being honest here, guys. And and, and then I look at the things like the Philip Schofield thing and that, and the way that he lied to his wife for so many years and everything else. And the fact that he let it drag on for so long. If he knew a long time ago that he was maybe feeling that he was going to, he is gay. And like, God knows how long he's been like this for. I don't know. But why did he let it drag on for so fucking long until he actually finally done it? And then why make it like the way he did it all fucking... Like, when I watched the Eamon Holmes interview last week where he sat there and he says, he came into my dress and then he threw himself on his knees and he was like, oh, 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 oh. And Eamon Holmes looked at him and says, what's wrong? And he goes, I'm gay. <laughs> and Eamon said, I just looked at him and went, is that all? I thought you'd kill someone or something. Or you're gay, you're gay, it's fine. But he was dramatic about it and it was over the top and it was all planned. Bullshit. See, at the end of the day, if I was married to someone, and I felt like I was gay or whatever else, and I was married to them, and I knew it, I would speak to them right away. I wouldn't dr- kick my heels and drag around for, say, five, ten years. That's ruining that other person's fucking life. You know what I mean? You know, it's, it's just crazy. And I look at that story, and I, I scratch my head, and I go, you know something? It's the celebrity world. It's just, oh, I don't know. It's crazy. So it is. Absolutely crazy. Moving on, back to our old ginger friend, Harry, who's in court this morning. Probably in court now as I'm recording this this morning. He's back in court today. He didn't turn up to court yesterday. I was having a coffee this morning with the radio on, the background and the news on, and I heard that he didn't turn up in court yesterday. This whole phone, oh, phone hacking thing, whatever it is, he's up for it at the minute. The last time he was seen when he was celebrating his child's second birthday. And apparently he was flying home for the case today. So Mr. Harry's in court today again. So it is. But to stop the world, now stop the press, Harry's in court today. Yeah, I wonder how he gets on. Unbelievable. Absolutely crazy, but he's in court today, so we'll just have to wait and see. I wonder where Megan's doing. Um, some sad news for you guys. Um, big, long-time celebrity, and, and everybody knows who this gentleman is, Michael J. Fox. Now, Michael J. Fox in recent times is obviously... Has been his health been getting worse. You know, we have he was announced a long time ago that he was suffering from Parkinson's. Everybody knows that. 
I've seen him recently in the last couple of years is Parkinson's is really getting bad. Um, but it was reported here uh, this late last night that apparently he had a fall on stage and he has admitted that his Parkinson's is getting harder to live with every day. He's 61 now. Gee, was my God. Famous for the Back to the Future movies. Um, family Ties, all the different programs he's done over the years. Um, we statement was made here this morning, or late last night, saying Michael J. Fox has fallen over on stage as he admitted his battle with Parkinson's is getting harder. The 61-year-old actor known for his portrayal of Marty McFly in Back to the Future trilogy and also confessed to fans he is in intense pain every day. He was diagnosed with incurable... Uh, Sorry, Fox, who was diagnosed with the incurable degenerative brain disorder. I am in pain every single day. Uh, he just always he goes on here to say, you know, how bad he's got over the years and stuff. And, you know, it's so, so sad. Um, he first uh, spoke out about his diagnosis in 1998 and later announced that he was entering a second, sorry, into his second retirement. Um, in 2020 obviously he's done a few public appearances and whatever else and everything else but in recent interviews and all saw of him the poor man is struggling and it's so so sad to see because Parkinson's is such a fucking bitch and I'm being brutally honest with you you know I obviously knew about Parkinson's growing up as a kid but my eyes were really open to it whenever I used to work with the elderly back in the day Um, you know when I worked in care homes and stuff and I seen people with Parkinson's disease it broke my fucking heart seeing people like that struggle um, people who I know personally, um, family members and things they got struggling with it as well. It's a horrible, horrible thing to see. You know, uh, it's a heartbreaker. And you see people like that. I mean, you see a lot of even like you know big celebrities who are struggling. Like Bruce Willis, for example, he's another one who's got a a, a, a an illness as well at the minute, and he's starting to go down the hill as well. And it's so, so sad. And I know people say, oh, well, it's part of life. And people get sick and they eventually go on and pass on, whatever else. But it, Parkinson's is always one of them ones when I see some of them with really bad Parkinson's. It really breaks my heart. I mean, I saw a video online there recently of a, of a, a man sitting in a fast food restaurant trying to eat food. And these two young ones. And again, going back to what I said to you earlier, not all young ones are bad. Um, this guy caught her on camera. Um, this I don't know, I would say he was probably in his thirties or forties. Couldn't like lift his food properly because of his Parkinson's. His hands were trembling, his head was shaking and stuff. And these two young ones, I would say probably late teens, early twenties, went over to help the man and help help him get his food and his drink and all. And he hugged them and he thanked them for it and all. And you know, it was just a, a warming thing to see young ones doing that. You know, but it's it, it's just so sad when you see stories like that of. You know, that, it, 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 it's so, so sad. And then to know that he's had a fall there, Michael J. Fox, recently as well. You know, we just wait for that day to hear that he's unfortunately passed away, which is so, so sad. I don't wish it on anybody, to be quite honest with you. Not even my own worst enemy. But so, so sad to hear the fact that he's not doing um, so good. And he is in constant pain every single day, which is horrible. Guys, we were talking about this in the podcast the other day about mortgages and stuff like that there and buying houses and whatnot. Um, some news that I read here this morning saying mortgage rate horror as homeowners face £500 extra a month due to worse than expected inflation. Now, we were talking about this the other day saying about different things about houses and whatever it's here, but I'll read this wee statement right here because some of you have gotten in touch with me about it and especially on social media, you know, saying about your, your mortgage prices going up since COVID and some of you were saying about the water rates and the taxes and stuff, people who live in the mainland England saying about water rates going up and extra charges on their rates and whatever else here. But it's nice said here this morning, homeowners facing um, face paying hundreds of pounds extra each month on mortgage payments as banks uh, react to the latest inflation figures. Five-year mortgage did soar by £560 per year within the last two weeks. That is fucking insane. So what is the fact that they're putting prices up again? And I was actually saying there, um, was it in the next couple of years or... If apparently if Labour get elected in the in the office, that apparently food prices are going to go up too as well, which is just it's uh, it's crazy, absolutely crazy. I mean, somebody's been talking to me about your mortgage payments and all. And it, it's so sad to read that. You know, being a former house owner myself, it it, it is absolutely insane to see the fact that these prices are going up again. So it is so. 
something I want to talk about here on the podcast today as well, which I'm sure you are all probably sick of hearing over the last three fucking years. Um, there's more investigation going on about now. I talked about how Bumbling Boris a few weeks ago saying that he had the hand in his WhatsApp messages and all about this whole COVID investigation going on. There's a big story that broke actually last night about the COVID lockdowns. Now he's all talked to me about this and I'm going to say as much as I can here before I get banned from the fuck. I'm probably get taken off the earth for what I say here, but you know me, I don't give a shit in this podcast to be honest. But there's more stuff coming out here about these COVID lockdowns that happened. Me personally, I think that this should have never fucking happened. I thought they were stupid. Um, but it says here, and I, COVID lockdowns saved as few as 1,700 lives. It says devastating study. Um, you know, there's, there, there's people out here that I send that they're demanding answers. Lockdown saved as few as 1,700 lives in England and Wales and Northern Ireland in spring 2020 saying that lockdowns should have never happened and we should have done with other countries like Sweden did do. Which I've been saying that from a long fucking time. Look at Florida, for example. Your man DeSantis, who's now going, apparently going to go for the, the president's job. Get ready, a sleepy job. Remember, he fell the other day again. Fuck me, man. That man fell in his arse again. I couldn't believe it. Um, Yeah, apparently these lockdowns were coming out apparently being useless. Like a not point... I was it last time I checked it was not point one percent effect, but it's all coming out now, guys. I've been saying this for years. I, I could have went on YouTube a long time ago and, and said about this and get my view on it, but I didn't because I didn't want to get fucking nailed to the walls, a conspiracy theorist and all this crap. But it's all coming out now, and there was a a, a a thing I heard on the news this morning saying it could take years before this is all comes out and all this crap gets dragged out and whatever else. See, at the end of the day, when watching that story the other week, girl, about these uh, WHO arseholes trying to get a treaty signed by all countries to do a lockdown whenever they see fit and do more lockdowns and all that there. Let me tell you something. I would love to see them try and do that. Do you really think anybody's going to listen to that bullshit anymore after all the crap that we've been through before? Nobody is going to listen to that anymore. These WHO guys are fucking clowns. The who? Who are they? The the guys like fucking Chris Whitty who stands in front of your TV screen who doesn't even blink and looks like an alien and all he ever says is next slide please next slide please all these guys you saw on our TV have now vanished and disappeared you don't fucking see them anymore not that I've seen them anyway like but it came out in that a, a, a recent study saying that as as few as seventeen hundred lives were only saved because of lockdowns listen my view of it was if you're fit and healthy and under the age of eighty you had a 99.997% survival rate. When I worked in care homes, guys, like I talked about there a few minutes ago, when people were in a care home and they were like, had loads of underlying health problems, whether it be kidneys, lungs, heart, strokes, whatever it is, or whatever the problem is, illnesses, if they caught a really bad flu or cold, they were fucked. And they ended up either catching pneumonia out of it or they already ended up in the hospital. And if they came back from the hospital, they either took them a few weeks to recover or the worst case scenario would depend on their illnesses or their underlying health problems, they passed away, which was heartbreaking, heartbreaking. i seen it happen to many of old people and residents and people with illnesses and stuff like that. I called COVID an old, an old, old person killer, simple as. You know, I had COVID, I had nothing wrong with me. I was one of the lucky ones. Brooke had it the first time it first came out. She had a bad flu for a few days. Lewis caught it last year, felt he had a cold for two or three days. Mum and dad, like Jesus Christ, mum with her underlying health problems, fuck me. Mum thought if she caught COVID she was dead, she was gone because of her past history, you know, which is extreme with mum, which I've never talked about her, her personal illnesses, I don't want to hear until she said it's alright for me to do so. But I mean, like, fuck me man, seriously. Mum and dad had a flu for two or three days. Tony had it, you know, we've all had it. And we're all still here, so they all at the very start it was like if you catch COVID, you could die. Nope, load of shit. But anyway, that came out in the news over the last day or so about these and people are demanding answers. And I don't I don't fucking blame them. I legitimately don't blame them. But anyway, enough of that crap. We're we'll trying to move on from all that nonsense. Right, let's get into some of your messages today, guys, because I got quite a few of you um asking me messages. I want to start here today on Facebook. So I am. 
But before I do go any further on the podcast today, I want to actually send in a thank you. So I do. I actually received a special gift last week from a fan. Yes, and this fan's a regular listener of the podcast, regular watcher of the vlogs, and I want to say a big thank you to Kieran Gilmartin. And the reason why I want to say thank you to, to Kieran is because Kieran actually sent me a gift, which I absolutely love, and it's got into my personal collection. Kieran was over in London watching the Only Fools and Horses, um, the musical, and why he was there, he because he knew it was one of my favorite TV shows ever, which is, and I, oh, I love Only Fools and Horses. I watch it all day. Whenever it's one of them shows, I go and watch whenever I'm having a shitty day or a bad day or a, a feel like crap or something bad's happened. There's a, a selection of shows I have that I've watched over the years, and that is one of them. He actually went and bought me a program from the the, the show and and sent it to me, um, which I I managed, he, he got it delivered to a place for me to get and I went and I, it was there for me and I couldn't believe it. There was a a little note attached to it as well, um, wishing Dad's health after his recent heart attack to get well soon. He loved the podcast, loved the videos, whatever else. So I just wanted to give a, a personal thank you to him today for sending me that. And it's in my personal collection with along with the likes of my programs from for special events I've been to over the years with all these big shows I've been to, the likes of WrestleManias and, and certain live shows I've been to and all programs that I have signed by different things, different celebrities and whatnot. So yeah, that it really, really touched my heart because it's only fools and horses. So thank you very much, Kieran. I do appreciate your um what do you call it? your little obviously gift? It was it was amazing. I couldn't get over it when I was handed it. It was like whoa, holy shit! It's great. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I had a flick through it there. Uh, I was looking through it. I was reading it. I was just I want to go and see that live show because apparently that live show is incredible. But thank you very much for that. I do appreciate it. Um, he did send me a message for the podcast this week as well, saying um, about the upcoming football match coming tomorrow night for any West Ham fans out there. Saying, look at these prices for the Conference Cup final. Um, he says, you were talking about prices for events a while back. And he sent me a screenshot of the prices for some of the tickets for the, the, the European final tomorrow night for West Ham. Yeah, some live events people do take the piss when it comes to selling tickets, whether it be football or concerts or whatever. People know how to take the piss. Um, they really, really do. And no surprise with it being a European final. People looking to uh, capitalise, should we say, on... Uh, Big events and try and make a lot of money out of it, which is just ridiculous to be quite honest with you. Uh, let's have a look here and see. Right, one here. I'm actually going to go here over to Instagram. So, I've got quite a lot on Instagram today. A lot on Instagram. Okay, but one here from Luke McDonald. Is it McDonald? D O N N E L L. It says here. Question for the podcast, Matthew. How did you become involved in sports media and what advice would you give to young people interested in sports media? Okay, look, how I got involved in sports media. Now, when I got involved in football was 12, 13 years ago. Um, I think I've told this story before. I had just finished up my wrestling days, running my own wrestling company, putting on shows, whatever else, and had all this camera gear on about it. And I've always had a passion to make videos and, and, and football and all different sports, whatever else. I just literally walked into Bangor Football Club at the time and I asked them for an opportunity to film matches and whatever else. And for the first season I was there, I just filmed the highlights of the games and I just got myself more experience as time went on. And then the season after that, I asked them, could I possibly be a presenter? Like, you know, stand in front of a camera every week, talk about the news, talk about what's going on at the club, give you updates of what's happening at the club, you know, just general stuff every single week. And they went, there's the ball, go run with it. And it did. Now, I had no previous media experience at all in that field. Obviously, I was self-taught in making videos and editing and creating whatever else. I mean, I never left school with any like diplomas or any A levels or anything out there and, and, and media or anything out there. Everything I've done in media, I've done it myself. I've taught myself. I've studied hard. You know, I've learnt myself, you know, all those different things. And as time has went on, obviously the years have went by. I'm involved in sports media now for years. 
you know, but advice for yourself. Um, you've asked for advice getting in the in the sports media. I mean, if it if it's if it's your thing you want to do, you know, just do it. You know, get. Up. I always say to people, if you want to do something, just just fucking do it. Just get up and do it. Don't hold back. You know, if that's your passion. You want to do something. Do everything in your power to make it happen. Now you say you want to be involved in sports media. What type of sport is it you want to be involved in? Is it football, rugby? You know, what is it? Basketball? I don't know. Cricket? Whatever it is, sport or is it just overall sport in general? You know, if you're looking to get involved in sports media, you know, if that's one of your things you want to do, then do it. What type of aspect the sport and, and media you want to do? Do you want to do like website designing? Do you want to do TV stuff? Do you want to do social media? What is it you want to do? You know, send me an message and let me know, and I'll, I'll send you a couple, a couple of um, tips across of obviously what you want uh, to do in sport. Because to be honest with you, me in sport at the minute in football, I love BNC football. Guys, honestly, I have the fucking best position in this country when it comes to the Irish League. The people that I meet, the, the grounds that I go to, you know, like there's the other day, for example, I'm standing at our training ground the other day before I left and I'm standing chatting to a guy who is in the top 10 overall goal scorers in world football like world football he's in the elite the likes of Lionel Messi Cristiano Ronaldo Glenn Ferguson you call him look him up look him up honestly that guy has scored hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of goals over the years Irish League legend I'm standing talking to him like he knows me. His son plays for our team. But he was there the other day um, at a charity game after our boys were training. And I'm just standing talking to him like nothing, like nobody's business. I stand on the terrace and watch this guy. I used to admire this guy. This guy was like a fucking idol when I was a young boy in Irish League football. You know what I mean? He was like, I compared him to like the likes of the Alan Shearer of Irish League football. He just fucking scored goals for fun. He was an absolute icon, and I'm standing talking to him because of my job in football. This is the privileges that I get, you know, and all these other legends of the game here in Northern Ireland, and I get, they just say hello to me, like they know me, and I'm just like, whoa, holy shit, you know, this is incredible. I love my job in football. So honestly, um, look, if you, want to, if you want to be involved in it, do everything you can. Let me know, obviously, send me an more message and let me know what, you th- what what type of sports media you want to get involved in. I'll try and give you a bit of more advice about it. But I do appreciate it. Um, thanks for your message on Instagram. I really do appreciate it. Right, I got one here on Instagram from Johnny. This is a bit of an interesting one, actually. I want to obviously address this one here today. I watch all your content and um, I am a fan. However, it'd be better if you were fully transparent. You say you hate the BBC, but after watching your BBC vlog after the Liverpool Barcelona interview, you love them and that to be fair. So BBC actually have a massive helping hand in advertising your channel. Okay. That's what you really think. Well, to be quite honest with you, Johnny, before the BBC came to my house that day, my video would actually that Barcelona video would actually went viral before they even stepped foot in my house, hence the fact why they contacted me that day. They weren't the only channel who I'd done interviews with that day. I'd done interviews with radio stations and channels all across Europe that day. Whether it be on Zoom calls, Skype calls, um, radio interviews by telephone, TV interviews, whatever else. And at the time, this is well before COVID started and before all the COVID bullshit started. Now, I did have my opinion on the BBC well before I'd done this interview back in 2019. So my channel was known before BBC stepped foot in my house. My video was at over a million views before BBC stepped foot in my house and it was still growing throughout the day even before it was broadcasted on television on the news that night. So to say that I love the BBC is a little bit... No, I don't think so. You say here, you hit the BBC but after watching the BBC vlog after the Barcelona interview, you love them and not to be fair. No. My video was going viral before they even stepped foot. That's why they contacted me, because the video was going fucking viral. Um, you know, and even the people who were in my house that day, who I've got to know personally as well, you know, are only there for a fucking paycheck, to be quite honest with you. And there was another guy in the house, not the, the, the guy that interviewed me, there was another guy in the house that day as well, who is no longer with the company because he quit because of all the bullshit that's going on in the BBC. 
So, and they said they were aware of advertising my channel. Mm, no. I was known on YouTube before that. Now, not, not as big till the viral video happened, but it was the viral video that helped us get bigger, not the BBC. So, and again, I've done interviews after that with the BBC. Mark Simpson, BBC, contacted me again after Liverpool won the league. They contacted me. I didn't contact them. So, just to clear that up, because when I done an interview after Liverpool won the league and we were on the news again, Lewis and I, they contacted us. I didn't contact them. So, and the answer to your question, no, I don't love the BBC at all. I, I don't love the BBC because of a lot of reasons, and I've said it on this podcast before, but, you know, saying that I love the BBC, them in that video, no, i done multiple interviews that day. Multiple. Spanish, French, German, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland. i done news stories everywhere. Newspaper articles, but I still have all the cuttings out of all the papers, by the way. We were on local news in Liverpool. We were in the Liverpool papers. You know, i I done so many interviews that day, I lost fucking count. And as I said to you before, they even stepped foot in my house. That's the reason why they contacted me, because the video was going fucking boogaloo on YouTube. They saw a viral story and went, oh, bang, let's go and contact him. So, and my social media was going mad that day, even before they contacted me. Because when I woke up that next morning, if you go and watch that vlog the next morning, when Brooke and Lewis were sitting on the sofa with me, the video was sitting at 460 fucking thousand views or something like that anyway at the time. Because you see me in the vlog that morning saying, oh my God, it's 400 or 30. And before they even stepped foot in the house, I hadn't checked it for an hour or two. And after the interview was conducted and finished, it was the young lad in my, in my living room from the BBC turned around and said to me, Matthew, do you realise your video is well over a million? And it was coming up to a million even before they came to the house. And it was ma even more than 400,000 before they contacted me. Because my phone rang that morning because they, they contacted I think it was someone in football or something like that to get my number. So, no. And again, they've contacted me. I ain't contacted them. I've been on the BBC radio many a time. Talk, like during the lockdowns, talking about education, about kids not being at school. You know, I've, I've put it on my YouTube channel. But the bottom line is, Johnny, they contacted me. I didn't contact them. So, just thought I'd clear that up for you today. But anyway, let's get into another one here from uh, Instagram here. Let's have we look here and see. Right, one here from Anne. Let's see, Anne, let's see if we can find out where you're from. Anne is from Barnsley in England. That's what she is. Hello, Anne. How you doing? Hi, Matthew. Just wanted to ask you a question for your podcast. What is your thoughts on Luton Town being promoted to the Premiership next season? Myself and my whole family are big Barnsley fans, but it's going to seem really strange seeing Kenilworth Road in the Premiership next season. What's your thoughts on this? Okay, Anne. Um, my thoughts on that is, wow, Luton Town in the Premiership, could you have predicted that? Not a chance. Are they going to have to do a lot of work to the ground before they can even get the Premier League standard? 100%. What was it, they got like 100 million or something for that fucking game? It's the world's richest game, the playoff final. It's going to cost them at least 20 million to get their ground up to standard, obviously for the likes of the cameras and VAR and all the standards for the Premier League rules and stuff like that. They've got a really unique ground, guys. If anybody hasn't seen it before, they have a ground where the actual away turnstiles is in between two houses. It's crazy going look it up. There's loads of videos online about it. It's a really old-fashioned football ground, old school. Like, I remember years ago, Luton Town, along with the likes of Oldham, Queen's Park Rangers, uh, I can't remember who else was it, this one, had the first ever plastic pitch not 3 or 4G like you see now it was looked like grass this was actually a plastic pitch back in the day so there were um, 
the history of that ground is just incredible and the fact that they're in the Premier League now which is great to see you know it's great to see other clubs getting a crack at the Premier League now they may here's the thing they may go up there next season get absolutely fucking scalped every week you know City may beat them five and six we may Liverpool may beat them five and six every week you know but at the end of the day you know it's good for the club it's good for the area you know they're going to make a lot of money out of it because of tv deals and sponsors and whatever else you know what I mean? all these different things it's good because at the end of the day give you an example look at blackpool when blackpool got promoted to the premier league the money they invested in their stadium their stadium looks cool. it's a great wee stadium now and they've earned a lot of money out of it now and they're doing really well okay they got relegated and stuff like that there and they've had a couple of relegations since then but they're moving back up again but, I mean, the, the, the money that they use from that to improve their state. I mean, Blackpool's ground before they went to the Premier League was an absolute shithole. You know, go and check up all the photographs online of Blackpool's ground before the way it is now. Blackpool's ground now is a tidy wee ground. I've been outside it, but I've never been inside it. But I tell you what, Blackpool really did capitalise on that. You know, clubs are going up into the, into the Premier League next year. And it's going to be good to see the likes of the Luton Towns and all up there. It's going to be interesting to see because obviously we've got other smaller grounds in the Premier League. The likes of Bournemouth ground, which is only about 15,000. Back in the day, we had the old Dell, Southampton's ground, which was only about 14, 15,000. A ground that teams hated going to because the fans were like right on top of you because it was so close to pit side. But you know what I mean? It, it, it's nice to see. And, and to be honest with you, I would love to see them do well. You know, I really, really would. Now, for what I've been reading, apparently their first couple of games could be away from home because obviously the work being done to their ground and stuff like that. Because their work, their ground does need a lot of work. But at the end of the day, it's great to see them up there, and I hope they have an absolute ball. I really, really do, and I hope it'd be great to see live matches, Premier League matches, from <laughs> from Luton Towns, Calvin Rose. It'd be great to see. I can't wait to see it next season. It's going to be great for the game, and I'm looking forward to seeing them up there next year. Really, I'm looking forward to it. So, um, thank you for your message, uh, Barnsley fan. So there you go. That's going to be another one here. And have a way to current see now what I've got here on Instagram before I go on. Uh, so many people have to put Philip Schofield, which is crazy. Uh, right, one here from Lindsay. Lindsay on Instagram has wrote to me, uh, Lindsay Barr, her name is, by the way, Lindsay Barr. Hello, Lindsay, how are you? Thank you for sending me a message. Just wants to know, Hey Matthew, just wanted to see what your view are is of ABBA possibly re reuniting at Eurovision next year to celebrate their 50th anniversary. I know you and your daughter are big Eurovision fans, as we are in our own home here, but would they even consider going on stage to celebrate their 50th anniversary next year in Eurovision and of all places, Sweden? What's your thoughts on this? Okay, Lindsay, well, what's my thoughts on that there? I actually, believe it or not, I actually saw a recent interview with ABBA about three weeks, two weeks ago. Or was it just after the concert itself? And they were asked, the two guys from ABBA, and both of them said no. Would I like to see it happen? Who wouldn't? ABBA's been around 50 years, like 50 fucking years. I can't believe that. Like, And of all places, it's going to be in Sweden. Eurovision, which they won, that get, get obviously catapulted their career. Would I like to see them do it? Who wouldn't? Now, funny enough, I was talking to Brooke last week about Eurovision, and I said to Brooke, you know, look, do you want to go to Eurovision next year? It's in Sweden. It's going to be a bit, a bit tight for money because Lewis and I are in Philadelphia in April for Wrestle, the start of April for WrestleMania 40, and we'll obviously have to come home, and then obviously plan to go to Sweden. So... What I love to see ABBA reunite next year for one off 50 year anniversary at Eurovision. Wow, what what a what an experience. I know they were doing like a thing recently where they had a concert and stuff, but it was all like screens and holograms, whatever the fuck else it was and whatever else. Um it was, it was held in London, I think it was recently. Um you weren't even allowed to take photographs of that or take any videos of any sort, which was weird for a concert nowadays, especially with all the smartphones and whatever else. But to answer your question, would I love to see it happen? 100%. Who wouldn't? I mean, ABBA has so many famous tracks for the over the years. They've been in multiple movies, you know, and TV shows, whatever else. It's used for TV adverts and more. You know, would I love to see ABBA at the 50th anniversary of ABBA at Sweden 
at the Eurovision? 100%. But it, is it going to happen? Well, they're saying no at the minute. But I always say, money talks and bullshit walks. So you just never, ever, ever, ever know. So you don't, you never, ever know. But anyway, thanks for your messages. I do appreciate it. Let's get into the emails. Podcast at yahoo.com. Let's have a look here and see. Right. I've got one here from Oshin. Oshin is from Balamina. Hello, Oshin from Balamina here in Northern Ireland. How are you doing? <laughs> Hi, Matthew. I know you're involved in local football and just wanted to get, get your opinion on David Jeffrey. He's just recently left Balamina United as manager. Do you think he'll be managing anybody anytime soon? What's your view on David Jeffrey? Have you ever had an experience with David Jeffrey? And what's your view on his career as a manager? Thanks for taking the time to read this email. Oh, she. Now, for everybody out there who doesn't know what, who David Jeffrey is, David Jeffrey is an iconic, uh, well, I would say he's an iconic Irish League manager. He won multiple, oh, I don't know how many trophies he won with fucking Linfield. I lost count of many trophies he won with Linfield. Multiple league titles, Irish Cups, League Cups, fucking char- or, what do you call them? Uh, County Autumn Shields, you know, multiple titles for Linfield. Then he retired from Linfield, then he went to Palomina for a couple of years. Um, I think he's won a few trophies at Palomina, for what I remember, and recently stepped down. Now, I was at the Irish Cup final this year where they played Crusaders in the final. Crusaders destroyed them 4 0. And I knew by looking at David Jeffrey at the side of the pitch that he was distraught, he was exhausted, he was done, his team didn't turn up for him that day. Um, but again, it's it, it was so sad that was the see where it goes. Is he going to get back to management again? Mm, probably. Probably. Knowing Davey, he probably will. He'll probably take some time out and stuff like that. He's just recently retired from his own job. And I think he will maybe get back into football again at some point. Where will he go? I don't know. Um, I've had experiences with Davey Jeffrey. I've had a couple over the years. Uh, we were playing Palomino one night. I think it was 2018 or early 2019 maybe. Or maybe before that. With the welders one night down at the showgrounds, and I went over and spoke to him, and he, he said he recognised me from the TV and stuff. And you know, here's Norwell. Like I was talking to Glenn Ferguson the other day, he's Norwell too as well. That's who Glenn Ferguson's manager was, was David Jeffrey, nor Irish League icon. Stand talking to me like he knows me, and it's just incredible. He took a photograph with Lewis that night as well, and Lewis was over the moon. Then we played Ballymena. Uh, I think it was last year, um, pre season. And he was there, and I got to briefly speak to him again. So any any experience I've ever had with him, he's always been dead nice. He's been very kind and pleasant. Um, he's he's obviously been dead nice to me. I've not a bad word to say about him. He's he's a successful manager. He's won loads of trophies. I'm mean, not saying loads. He's won fucking multiple trophies. Like when he was at Linfield, he dominated the Irish League for a long time. But again, will he be back in football? Maybe. He'd probably take a break for a while. Um, where would he go? Honestly, I don't know. But thanks for your email. Appreciate it. Really do appreciate it. Thanks, uh, Oshin. I'll do one more email and then I gotta go, guys, because I want to wrap this one up for today. And then I'm gonna head on and get the rest of my day sorted out. Uh, let's have a look here and see. Right, I've one here from Jamie. Um, Jamie, where are you from? Doesn't even say. Oh, I don't know. Hey, Matthew, just wanted to say hello and say I love the podcast every single week. I see you were giving advice to people about doing podcasts themselves, and I wanted to see if you could give me some advice as well. I wanted to do a podcast on cars, and I was wanting to see if you had any advice or any tips how to get started. I'm a little bit nervous when it comes to speaking, but I think after a few episodes of recording, podcast i may build up the confidence to do a regular gig like yourself do you have any advice on this thank you for taking the time to read my email take care keep up the good work on the podcast right well as i said to was it last week or the week before i said about that um listen if this is what you want to do podcasting do it if you you said it's cars if you have a passion for cars and you know a lot of knowledge about cars and you want to talk about cars or whatever, just do it. All I can say to you is if you're a little bit nervous, before you put out a podcast, I'll give you a wee tip. 
Like even even when I was first starting to do TV broadcast in front of a, t- a camera each week for uh, Banger Football Club at the time, I'll be honest with you, my first lot of videos I'd done, I was brutal. I was absolutely shit. I didn't even know what I was doing. I was disorganized. I was nervous. You know, now I just stand and speak. Chow away like it's normal. Record yourself and listen back to yourself and make notes on yourself before you officially put out a podcast. You say you're very, very nervous. Then say, for example, write down a subject. Say it's a car you're talking about or whatever it is. Record your voice for a couple of minutes and then listen back. And say, oh, I didn't say that right. I didn't. I should have sort of said it this way. I should have sort of like you know, try and teach yourself your craft. Try and get a knack of how you're going to present yourself to the audience. If you know what I mean, like if you're going to talk about something about passionately, like say a car, like say you're talking about a, a Ferrari, and you're talking about the engine and talking about the, whatever else, the whole ins and outs of the car, the body work, whatever you, you know. Try and like sit down and try and you know. Find your find your skill, because then if you're going to throw yourself into the deep end and you're really nervous, you know you want to try and keep the audience interested. You want to try and keep the audience, you know, listening. So again, like me, I was nervous, but not as nervous. But from what I can read in your email, you're very nervous. So if you're very very nervous, try and you know create yourself a way of way, way you're going to do it, how you're going to present yourself and stuff like that, and try and like when I used to do. When I first started in football, I used to record myself doing a couple of scenes and then watch it back and go, no, maybe I should have, I should have, I need to say it this way or present it that way or change it. That, you know, that's the way I done it. I taught myself and I, I, I weeded out all the wee bad things that I, I, I didn't want to do anymore. You know what I mean? Anymore, I, I tried to teach myself as I went along. So, but again, if this is what you want to do and you want to be a podcaster, then fucking do it. Get your gear, get set up, whatever. You know, if you've anything, any advice you want um, on what to use to, you know, upload your podcast to or how to get them uploaded, send me another message. And again, if you have any more questions, just, just, just email me and I'll get back to you. Um, but if it's a passion you have about cars and stuff like that, there, and it's a very popular subject as well because there's a lot of people out there who love cars, you know, know want to know more about cars and, you know, the history of all different things and people want to learn about all different things about cars. It's a passionate subject to talk about. So if this is what you want to do, then, then go ahead and do it. You know, go for your do your do what you want to do for you. Like I already message I got earlier on there in, the, in this episode today saying, you know, you want to be involved in sports media. You know, if that's your passion, do it. Don't let anybody hold you back. Do it. So let me know how you're getting on. If you have any more questions? Certainly send me an our email, and I'll I'll give you a couple more pointers. But again, if you're really really nervous, try and overcome that by maybe recording a wee episode here or there and listening back and going. No, maybe I should have said it that way. I should try and present, no, try and find out all your, your wee bits and bits and try and create your own persona to try and be yourself more out there and talk more and, and try and get people to, it's all about trying to keep the audience interested. I mean, me personally, I'm, I'm just a natural talker. And again, I've been podcasting for years. I've been on radio, I've been on TV, I've been everywhere else. So I've been on YouTube for years. So, but if you go back and listen to some of my early stuff, I was fucking brutal. Like, but anyway, keep in touch and uh, good luck. But anyway, guys, that's going to bring us to the end of another episode of the Murray Army Podcast for this Tuesday. Um, thank you very much for taking your time out of your day to listen. Uh, any more questions you want to get in touch with me in the future? Murray Army Podcast at yahoo.com. Also, social media, which is Instagram and Facebook, and also the website murrayarmy.co.uk. Guys, hope you're enjoying. The, hope you all enjoy. Sorry, the sunshine while it lasts here in the UK and beyond. Um, hope you're all having a good week. I'm going to go here now and get my working day started because I've just finished recording this podcast and it's just gone past nine thirty in the morning. So I'm going to go try and get this put out now before I continue on with my day. And um, once I get wrapped up with my day later on tonight, maybe this evening, I'm hoping to try and head out for an hour. We walk maybe down to the park um, nearby just to go out and stretch the old legs. Um, a lot of walking over the last weekend or so but I want to try and do more walking as possible um, but anyway yes guys coming up on Thursday's podcast we have the return of Jackass of the Week so if you have any suggestions for Jackass of the Week get them in now I want to hear from you and also more subjects of the news stories, views whatever else as I always do talk about on Thursday's episode of the Murami Podcast so guys until Thursday enjoy your Tuesday, Wednesday and I'll see you back here on Thursday for another episode So until then, 
Enjoy yourself. BCF and that sunny there, guys. We're playing a sun cream. And until Thursday, I will see you all then, guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs>